हेलो एवरीबडी टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू अबाउट द स्केलेटन ऑफ हार्ट द स्केलेटन ऑफ हार्ट सो यू नो दैट हार्ट हैज यू नो द टू एट्रिया द लाइन अब द टू वेंट्रिकल्स लाइन बिलो एंड इन बिटवीन द इज अ फाइबरस स्केलेटन एंड द फाइबरस स्केलेटन प्रोवाइड्स एंकरेज और देन द पॉइंट ऑफ अटैचमेंट टू द मस्कुलेचर ऑफ द एट्रिया अब एंड द मसल्स ऑफ द वेंट्रिकल्स बिलो so because you know the muscles actually need some point of anchorage so these muscles the musculature of the atria is a different set of muscles and the musculature of the ventricles is a different set of muscles and in between is a fibrous skeleton of the heart so there is no point of connectivity like you know the muscles of the atria they do have no connectivity the muscles of the ventricles except that only one point and that is the point of av bundle you know this conductive system of the heart as a node av node the bundle of hairs the pinji fibers they are not nervous tissue they are actually modified cardiac muscles so the impulse you know that is generated in the right atrium and as a node and then communicates to this as a av bundle and through the av bundle that's one point of connectivity between the musculature of the atria and the musculature of the ventricles so that there is a uh, synchronization there is synchronization between the uh, impulse conduction and the pumping activity of the heart so to prevent disorganized or random conduction of impulses to prevent arrhythmias there needs to be a fibrous skeleton another purpose of this fibrous skeleton is yes the walls we have two av walls the tricuspid and mitral wall and the two walls of the arteries like pulmonary trunk and the ascending artery so these walls also need to be patent like competent so that it should compress or it should come collapse so for that purpose there is a skeleton of heart so i'm going to tell you about the skeleton of heart and just draw a diagram so that you can understand better okay so like here you see and here you will have the av orifice and here it will be the interatrial septa and you will have a interventricular septa the center of interventricular septum is fibrous at the upper end So, and it's drawing in the blue wall. So you can understand that this is the musculature of the heart. What you're seeing here, it's this. If you take a section here, take a section here of the heart, you will find that there's a fibrous skeleton. So that fibrous skeleton will provide attachment of the muscles of the atria from above, and the fibrous skeleton will provide attachment of the muscles of the ventricles from below and the fibers so the membranous portion of the interventricular septum also will attach to even the interatrial septum so those are the attachments but there is no connectivity between the atria and musculature of the atria and ventricle except that there will be a av bundle through which the impulse will be conducted down AV bundle will be present here, and this is how it will descend down, right? And then the right and left bundle of this, like this, there will put into fibers, reach into the capillary muscles. They will move into the band, and here will be as you know, right? So this is all like the connecting system, the heart. What I'm not to focus upon, but my purpose of focusing is upon the. Skeleton of heart, the green color one. Now, let's show you with this skeleton. Consider what I'm drawing in the transverse section passing through this AV fissure. So when you see in a cut section, you will find that there will be two rings. These two rings are the right and left AV ring. Atrial ventricular rings. 
and of course there will be being a ring there will be a fibrous rigid ring this rigidity to these rings is provided by the dense connected tissue fibers and anterior to that there will be another ring here this ring you see is the aortic ring the ring of the aortic wall and even anterior to that you will find another ring this ring you see is the ring of the pulmonary trunk the pulmonary walls will be attached to this got it so you can complete the diagram with the help of this because it's the cut section right so here you see it is how i have taken a cut section from the a section and you know that this aortic wall is having three cusps like this it's tricuspid aortic wall having aortic sinuses anterior post left posterior right posterior or sinuses and here you will have the reverse part you will have semi lunar walls in the pulmonary orifice then you also know that from this anterior aortic sinus there is this commencement of this artery called which artery is this this is and the uh, this is the right coronary artery this is the right coronary artery right so this is the right coronary artery commencing from here the left posterior aortic sinus there will be this left coronary artery this left coronary artery both these arteries now you can see because i've taken a section here and that is the atrial sulcus atrial ventricular sulcus when i was telling you about the gross specimen you can see the video that i told you that this ad sulcus we divide for the convenience of studying that the right atrial ventricular sulcus is right anterior right posterior left anterior left posterior and in the left posterior you know it's the left circumflex coronary artery by the way i have to focus upon the skeletal part so as i already told you that these are the rings and this one will be a again now this one be a tricuspid this is the right ad ring so it's a tricuspid wall and this one is the mitral or the left ad wall so the green color i'm using is for the fibrous thing so remember this is a fibrous ring surrounding the tricuspid wall right and even you have fibrous ring here surrounding the mitral wall similarly here also there will be fibrous adjoining condensation of the nearby fibrous tissues got it now the intervening there here intervening portion there will be the condensation of the adjoining fibrous tissue that will make it that will join this like this so the two ad balls will be connected to the aortic orifice with the help of this fibrous band got it so this fibrous band you see here is called now this is called what it is called it is called
ਟਰਾਈ ਹੋਣਾ ਫਾਈਬਰੋਸਮ ਡੈਕਸਟਰ ਟ੍ਰਾਈਗੋਨਮ ਫਾਈਬਰੋਸਮ ਡੈਕਸਟਰ and these two variables for the further stability they are arranged in this figure of 8 pattern these part these the will fibers running in crossing and maintaining this separation and for the you know fixity of these two rings there is a figure of 8 fibers that are there then there is another fibrous band which connects this aortic ring to the mitral ring or the left av wall this also is a separate fibrous band and this is called this is called trigonum fibrosum trigonum fibrosum sinistrum okay what will be holding and supporting support to this pulmonary wall so remember there is this additional band here which connects this you know infundibulum the outlet of the right ventricle is called infundibulum which continues as pulmonary trunk so at between the infundibulum and the commencement of pulmonary trunk you find is this pulmonary wall so at the level of this pulmonary wall on this infundibulum posteriorly there is a fibrous band which connects us to the aortic ring and this is called tendon of infundibulum this is called tendon of infundibulum so what are these components the three components are told you trigonum fibrosum and dextrum it's this triangular band connecting aortic to mitral and tricuspid to mitral and tricuspid wall there is a figure of a fibrous band there is this fibrous band connecting aortic ring to the mitral on the left side this is trigonal fibrosum sinistrum and infundibulum or you know tendon of the infundibulum and of course the four rings these are also part of the or instead of writing 1 to 3 it will be better to write this is the right AV ring and this one is the left AV ring got it this is the aortic ring this is the pulmonary ring so you have like all these green color label which i have done is about the constituents of the skeleton of heart got it now so once again the purpose of this fibrous skeleton is so as to prevent the you know this musculature of the atria is not continuous with the musculature of the ventricle they are separated by this above to this there will be the muscles of the atria attached below to that will be this skeleton will be the muscles of ventricles attached and only point of and there will be the membranous portion of av uh, septum also will be attached down below to this so there will be only one point of passage of impulses and that is through the av bundle of his this is the only point of passage of conduction of impulses av bundle of his right it's a modified muscle of heart then the next point the next thing it is uh, providing i mean it's helping in that prevents the collapse of these walls it prevents the collapse it's maintaining the you know the stability of this heart the patency of these hearts so that was about and for your interest let me tell you that even in some animals 
the skeleton of heart gets ossified and there is a bone present within this so like here there will be a small piece of bone not in humans but in animals like sheep so in sheep you will find that the bone present in this skeleton of heart and that is called os cordis this is called os cordis okay so i think i have taught you this thing this is really important this is a part of your new mbbs curriculum it's in your anatomy syllabus so make sure you should know this okay thank you